Greetings citizens and welcome to Movie Night, your guide to resisting wokeness and entertainment. On this show we review the latest releases and provide recommendations for entertainment that is not influenced by woke propaganda. Dystopian fiction has long been a part of our cultural entertainment. Perhaps because history has taught us how quickly society can fall victim to authoritarian control and collapse. As woke ideology spreads like a tumor in the west, many works of dystopian fiction are looking more like documentaries every single day, and politicians increasingly seem to be reading from the authoritarian villain script. That's exactly what we're doing here is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. You should be ashamed. Calling yourself a community that cares. Oh, but we do care, Nicholas. It's all about the greater good. The greater good. How can this be for the greater good? But we're doing it for the common good. In response to the Irish Parliament and many others around the world that would like to destroy free speech, here is a list of five movies that warn us about the future we can expect from a woke dystopia. Number one, Equilibrium 2002. Equilibrium, directed by Kurt Wimmer, is a dystopian sci-fi film that offers a visually striking and thought-provoking exploration of a society stripped of emotion in the pursuit of eliminating conflict. Set in a future world where emotions are suppressed through a mandatory drug called prosium, the film follows John Preston, played by Christian Bale, a high-ranking government enforcer tasked with enforcing the emotionless regime. Equilibrium delves into philosophical themes, questioning the price of eliminating human emotions in exchange for societal order. The narrative raises ethical dilemmas and challenges the audience to reflect on the importance of individuality and the human experience. The film draws inspiration from classic dystopian literature and successfully incorporates these elements into its narrative, making it more than just a visually engaging action film. While Equilibrium received mixed reviews upon its initial release, it has since gained a cult following for its unique blend of action dystopian themes and philosophical exploration. Viewers who appreciate visually arresting films with a thought-provoking narrative will find Equilibrium to be a compelling and memorable cinematic experience. Number 2. 1984, 1984. 1984 is a chilling and faithful adaptation of Orwell's seminal work. The film captures the grim and oppressive atmosphere of the novel, presenting a world where individualism is crushed. And even thoughts are policed. John Hurt's portrayal of the protagonist, Winston Smith, is powerful and conveys the despair and rebellion inherent in the character. The film's production design is noteworthy, effectively bringing Orwell's vision to life with a stark and bleak visual style. The use of desaturated colors and the oppressive architecture create a sense of hopelessness that permeates every frame. 1984 successfully translates the novel's themes of surveillance, censorship, and the dangers of unchecked governmental power to the screen. The adaptation is not an easy watch, as it dives deep into the psychological and emotional toll of living in a society where conformity is not just encouraged, but enforced with brutality. Overall, 1984 stands as a haunting and faithful adaptation of George Orwell's prophetic novel. It remains a stark reminder of the importance of preserving individual freedoms and the potential consequences of unchecked authority. It is more relevant now than ever before because society is slowly turning into 1984. Number 3, Demolition Man, 1993. Demolition Man, directed by Marco Brambilla, is a sci-fi action film that seamlessly blends humor, over-the-top action, and a satirical take on society's future. Starring Sylvester Stallone as John Spartman and Wesley Snipes as Simon Phoenix, the film is set in the utopian yet overly sanitized version of Los Angeles in 2032. The movie's central premise revolves around a cop, John Spartan, who is thought out from cryo prison to apprehend his arch nemesis, Simon Phoenix, who has resurfaced in a seemingly peaceful and crime-free future society. What unfolds is a high-octane clash between the two characters in a world that has outlawed violence and even spicy foods. One of Demolition Man's notable aspects is its tongue-in-cheek commentary on societal norms and political correctness. The film humorously explores the consequences of an overly regulated and sanitized society, where even the use of profanity is a punishable offense. This satirical approach offers a unique lens through which the film explores themes of freedom, individuality, and the unintended consequences of extreme social policies. Dennis Leary's famous monologue in the film is perhaps one of the most prophetic moments in film history, accurately depicting what society has become. See, according to Cocteau's plan, I'm the enemy. Because I like to think. I like to read. I'm into freedom of speech and freedom of choice.
Number 4 Giver, 2014. The Giver, directed by Philip Noyce and based on Lois Lowry's acclaimed novel, offers a visually stunning and thought-provoking exploration of a dystopian society that sacrifices individuality for the sake of apparent utopia. Starring Brenton Thwaites as Jonas and Jeff Bridges as The Giver, the film brings to life a world where emotions and memories are suppressed to maintain control and eliminate conflict. Visually, The Giver is a striking film, using a gradual shift from black and white to color to symbolize Jonas's awakening to the richness of human experience. The cinematography beautifully captures the contrast between the emotionless conformity of the community and the vibrant world Jonas discovers through his training as the receiver of memories. Jeff Bridges delivers a compelling performance as The Giver, a character tasked with passing on the memories of the past to Jonas. Meryl Streep, in the role of the chief elder, adds depth to the narrative as the enigmatic authority figure who oversees the community's strict adherence to sameness. At its core, The Giver explores profound themes such as free will, individuality, and the cost of suppressing emotions. Number 5, V for Vendetta, 2005. V for Vendetta, directed by James McTeague, and based on Alan Moore's graphic novel, is a visually arresting and politically charged film set in a dystopian future Britain. The narrative unfolds in a totalitarian society where citizens are oppressed and manipulated by a regime led by Chancellor Adam Suller. V for Vendetta masterfully combines action, political intrigue, and philosophical discourse. Beyond its thrilling action sequences and stylish aesthetics, V for Vendetta delves into profound themes of government control, personal freedom, and the power of ideas. At the rate the Western world is going with censorship and restrictions of personal freedom, V for Vendetta should serve as a warning for us all about what awaits at the end of wokeness. These five films all serve as a reminder that there is no such thing as taking away rights, especially the right to individual thought and freedom of expression for the greater good. That's exactly what we're doing here, is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. How can this be for the greater good? The greater good. Shut it! That's it for this episode of Movie Night. Join me each Thursday as we resist wokeness in entertainment. Please like and subscribe.